Hello everyone. Welcome back to another session on dentistry and more. So today's topic is Hodgkin lymphoma and oral pathology. So we are moving on to a new subject that is oral pathology. So we'll be doing some videos on oral pathology. So today's video is of Hodgkin lymphoma and uh, this is a commonly asked question for university exam and also the Reed Steinberg cell and uh, one of the cell which is present in Hodgkin lymphoma is popcorn cell so can uh, we can study both the cells under Hodgkin lymphoma so let's see what is exactly Hodgkin lymphoma and its further details So before moving on to Hodgkin lymphoma, let's see what is hemo hematopoietic malignancy. So hematopoietic malignancy is nothing but uh, a malignancy related to blood. So basically we have two types of hematopoietic malignancy. One is lymphoma and another one is leukemia. So lymphoma is a general term used for proliferations that arise as discrete tissue masses whereas leukemia it is a neoplasm that present with widespread involvement of bone marrow and peripheral blood so leukemia is very common uh, we have uh, studied uh, leukemia whereas lymphoma is a discrete mass whereas the leukemia which is present in bone marrow and blood it is not very evident clinically but still it is a malignant condition whereas lymphoma it is very clinically evident because there will be uh, masses present in the lymphatic system so it is clinically evident condition so these are the two hematopoietic malignancies one is leukemia and one is lymphoma so today's class is about Hodgkin lymphoma so lymphomas are malignant condition or tumors of lymphoid system and specifically lymphocytes or its precursor cells. So that is lymphoma or we can say that it is the cancer of lymphatic system. So it is a tumor of lymphoid system especially the lymphocytes and their precursor cells. So there are basically two types of lymphomas. So today's session we are dealing with only Hodgkin lymphoma. There is a second one that is non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So these are the two basic types. Now let's see what is exactly Hodgkin lymphoma and its features. So these are a group of cancer which originate from lymphatic system. It was named after Thomas Hodgkin who first described it in 1832 and two other scientists we should remember one is Dorothy Reed and another one is Carl Steinberg they first described the malignant cells of Hodgkin lymphoma this is known as Reed Steinberg cell that's how this name came these are two scientists name and this is the scientist Thomas Hodgkin Dorothy Reed and Carl Steinberg. So Hodgkin lymphoma was the first cancer which could be successfully treated by radiation therapy and also by combination with chemotherapy. So this is a very treatable disease Hodgkin lymphoma. It is one of the first cancer which can be treated using radiation therapy or in combination with the chemotherapy. Now let's see the details of Hodgkin lymphoma. So when you write an exam paper, especially a short essay or long essay, you also, you always uh, should remember, should be written in this format, that is more subheadings. Rather than bulking up in a single content, you need to write more content, that is more subheadings, like etiology, risk factors, pathology, clinical features, lab diagnosis treatment and if you have any peculiar cells the details of cells its pictures 
and special names like also appearance so that fetches you more marks rather than uh, writing more about clinical features you write two pages about clinical features and write nothing about its risk factors nothing about treatment you won't get much marks always compress the answer and write under more and more subheadings so they look more on the left side that is the subheadings not on the content mostly so let's see one by one what is the etiology etiology is commonly unknown for this non hodgkin lymphoma now let's see little bit about epidemiology so epidemiology we know how it is distributed and which age group and which gender it's all about epidemiology so epidemiology is like it is bimodal distribution so what is bimodal distribution it is the disease the incidence of disease is peak so it is peaked in two age groups that is 25 to 30 and greater than 55 Oh, we can say dental caries is a bimodally distributed disease because it is seen commonly among teenagers and also among adult people. That is, when root exposure is there, there is high chances of caries and also young age group that is 10 to 15 age groups. So, dental caries is also a bimodal distribution uh, disease, just like Hodgkin lymphoma. And regarding the gender. it is more commonly or slight predilection regarding with the male gender that is like 1.1 is to 1 so it may vary little bit uh, country wise and it is very rare in less than 10 year group it is peaked in 25 to 30 or more than 55 so that is about epidemiology etiology now let's move on to the risk factors risk factors actually there is no clear risk factors the most common is epstein barr virus or hiv it is also seen among people with woodwork farming and sometimes it is run in family family history is a big factor so the first degree relatives have five fold increases in risk of hodgkin lymphoma so the first degree relatives of the already reported cases are at high risk and high socio economic status so this disease is commonly seen in high socio economic status it is one of the very rare disease which is seen in high social strata and it is a uh, prolonged use of human growth hormone also shown to be a risk factor okay growth hormone so why etiology and risk factors are different etiology is says that that causes we can say that streptococcus mutans causes dental caries risk factors is a attributing factor it could contribute to that disease so it can have more chances for that caries that particular disease so these factors are just risk factors not etiological factors so etiology and risk factors are different risk factors is more chances for caries not everyone will get the disease etiology is mostly most of the people will get that disease so we can say that if suppose if we take dental caries we can say that a uh, high socio economic status is a risk factor for dental caries because these people eat more sugar and so there are chances of more caries that is this factor streptococcus mutans is a etiological factors mostly it is associated with dental caries now let's move on to the pathology what happens is the lymphocytes are destroyed the immunity of the person is destroyed so the immune cells which cannot synthesize immunoglobulin due to the dysregulation of nuclear factor the dna will be affected there will be dysregulation of nuclear factor and it cannot synthesize immunoglobulin and it looks like reed steinberg cells that is outside we'll move to that later so that is a pathology it's the immune system is disrupted that is a main thing happening in lymphoma 
so how does it clinically appear clinically it looks like lymphadenopathy that is the masses concrete discrete masses that is painless non tender rubber type rubbery elastic discrete masses and it spreads mostly by chains of chain from one chain to another that is lymphatic chains it spread from one chain to another and splenomegaly also is a clinical feature and the mediastinal adenopathy so clinical features are this one also cervical lymph nodes are 80 percentage uh, cases cervical lymph nodes are involved whereas the mediastinal involvement is about 50 percentage and also uh, other symptoms like pruritus uh, nephrotic syndrome and immunohemolytic anemia hypercalcemia thrombocytopenia so there are lots of conditions are associated with hodgkin lymphoma now let's move on to the lab diagnosis how do we diagnose this so first thing is the blood picture and also we can say that there is another symptoms like fever there will be fever and also drenching night sweats and weight loss will be there so night sweats uh, weight loss and uh, fevers are other clinical features i have not written everything i just want to give a brief picture of hodgkin lymphoma not everything in detail it is not possible to write everything in this board so i have skipped few so these are the clinical features now let's move on to lab diagnosis when we take the blood picture that is complete blood count we can see neutrophilia eosinophilia and lymphocytopenia so lymphocytes are affected so lymphocytes are less in number it is immature or it is disrupted and esr is high ferritin count is high and the ultimate diagnosis is through biopsy so while using biopsy technique we identify this reed steinberg cell and confirming that hodgkin lymphoma so we can also take chest x ray ct scan ultrasound pet scan and liver function test renal function test all we can uh, use for diagnosis but ultimate thing is identifying histologically the reed steinberg cell and the treatment from the the beginning i told you it is one of the first cancer uh, which is treatable using chemotherapy and radiotherapy so it is a very much treatable disease hodgkin lymphoma you can go for a chemotherapy and radiotherapy so that is a, a brief picture of hodgkin lymphoma now let's see what is exactly the reed steinberg cell so from the name itself it is a uh combined effect of two scientists that is dorothy reed and carl steinberg so these people identified the exclusive and the peculiar histological feature of this hodgkin lymphoma that is reed steinberg cell it is nothing but a binucleate bilobed central nucleus with a large acidophilic nucleoli surrounded by a clear halo so you can see you, if you closely look at it you can see a owl's head it looks like a owl's head and these two are owl's eyes it is a mirror image eyes that is why it's known as owl's eye appearance okay sometimes a question might come as just read steinberg cell so it is binucleate bilobed nucleus with acidophilic central nucleoli which is surrounding by a clear halo it's known as owl's eye appearance so this is most commonly greater than 45 micrometer in diameter and it is also known as mononuclear or hodgkin cell mummified cell or lacunar cell so that is a uh, reed steinberg cell so these reed steinberg cells of hodgkin lymphoma are basically lymphocytic in nature and in the great majority of cases 
it is of B cell origin. So it is a B cell origin and lymphocytic in nature. Now let's see what is popcorn cell. So popcorn cell is nothing but it is a similar histological feature which is most commonly seen in nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma. So NLPHL nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma which is a very rare condition rare type of Hodgkin's lymphoma that is just 5 percentage of cases are with NLPHL. So this is uh, the cells are known as popcorn cell because it looks like an exploded kernel of cone also known as L and H cell so L and H cell is nothing but leukocytic and histiocytic cell L and H cell which arises from centroblastic germinal center of B cells so it is just like exploded kernel of cone it is uh, if and in this condition that is NLPHL mostly the Reed Steinberg cells will be absent instead of Reed Steinberg cells the popcorn cells will be present so both are coming under Hodgkin's lymphoma what is it this is another variant of a rare variant of uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma so that's all about Hodgkin's lymphoma so I talked about uh, its uh, the scientist names, its etiology, epidemiology, risk factors, pathology, clinical features, lab diagnosis, treatment, and in detail about Reed Steinberg cell and popcorn cell. So don't forget these names: Reed Steinberg, popcorn, and owl's eye. So these are the three things should be connected with Hodgkin lymphoma. So never get confused. You might study lots of cell, Sang cell, Reed Steinberg cell, popcorn cell. Uh, so many types of many names are there in many conditions, many syndromes, many diseases. So chances of confusion is very high. So always connect and study that is Hodgkin lymphoma is with Reed Steinberg, popcorn cell and owl eye, owl eye appearance. So it simply might ask for a short note that is what is owl eye or Reed Steinberg or popcorn cell. So if you have any doubts, uh, please comment uh, in the section. And if you would like to have any further lectures on any particular topic, that also mentioned in comment box. So I'll come up with a new topic on dentistry and more. Thank you.